ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا من سيئات اعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل الله وما يضلل فلا هادي الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واتلا شريك الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا لا تموتون الا وانتم مسلمون واتسموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا الحمد لله رب العالمين هو الذي جعل المسلمين in this ayah that i read to you usually the imam doesn't go this far usually he will stop usually in the juma khutbah ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ittaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun then you go to the next one ya ayyuhan nas taqrabukum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahid and so on but i continued i continued with the next part wa atasimu bi hablillahi jami'a not trying to say that one is better than the other to stop but i want to ask you a question to think about it if you know the meaning do you realize that allah is setting you up for what's coming but then you're not giving it to the people if you just read ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ittaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi what you have here so far you're saying to have taqwa for allah It's Allah's right that you have taqwa for him. Wala tamutun illa wa antum muslimun. And don't die except they're in the state of Islam. <gasps> and what? Because if you keep reading it, the next, very next word is and. Wa. Wa atasimu bihablillah. And. <coughs> Hold tight, all of you, to the habl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wala tafarqu and don't make faraqa what is faraqa division separation to divide something up something was whole and you divide it like you take an axe and you cut a, a tree or a bush or you make faraqa what does this mean to us today one of the chief problems facing us today is the division amongst the muslims there are muslims today and i've witnessed this with my eyes and my ears and i heard it and i saw it there are muslims today who will make more effort to find out what divides us what separates us and be sure that everybody else knows and then not speak to this but not even give him salam alaikum karma like an axe and then the same people will go with completely we're not just talking about Christians or Jews we're talking about people so far away from Islam and hang out with them go play soccer with these guys go play their games with these guys but well, a muslim come along ah no he's not from our minhaj what is this brother a pawn then what i've seen so many times is brothers would like to quote an ayah out of context a hadith that either is not a qualified hadith or a part of it or with a wrong kind of understanding of it. all of us are different in case you didn't know that 
Allah told us that in Surah Al-Hujrat. He said it very clear that He created all of us from Adam and Eve and then He made us different from each other so we could recognize each other. Is that right? We're different. Every human being is different. There's no two exactly alike. And there's no two Muslims exactly alike. And if you said, yeah, but this one makes mistakes. Oh, and you don't? Huh? So you're perfect? MashaAllah. MashaAllah. So you have the perfect Islam. You live by the perfect rules and all the rest of us are what? Let me share something else with you from the Quran and think about it. Allah tells us in Surah Baqarah, Ya yulladina amanu udkhulu bisumi khabatan Oh, you who are the real people of real iman, real dedicated faith, okay? Enter, this is Allah telling you, enter into Islam perfectly. Do you catch the nuance of that? You've already got the perfect faith according to the ayah. Oh, you who believe, enter into Islam perfectly. What does that mean? Obviously, you didn't get there yet. Hello? So you're not perfect. You're not. But enter into it perfectly. Then he continues. That's not over. And don't follow the footsteps of the shaitan. Verily, he is your avowed enemy. Who's the enemy to us? Jews? No. Christians? No. Donald Trump? No. Each other? Come on. The shaitan. And as soon, and by, by the way, what was it that he did? What, what, what is Allah referring to the footsteps of shaitan? Obviously, we can't see his footsteps, so what is it talking about? You need again, go back to the Quran. You can start in Surah Baqarah and find that Allah ordered all all to bow down because of the creation of Adam and they all did illa iblis. Only one didn't do it. And why? Quran tells us why. Kibber. What's kibber? What's the big deal about kibber? Shaitan is known since the time of Adam. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the Last Testament, all of them testifying to this guy called the devil, Iblis, Lucifer, Shaitan, different names. But everybody know who you're talking about. Did he rob a bank? No. He was playing cards, gambling? No. He was eating pork? No. He killed somebody? No. Why he's going to hell forever? What did he do? Actually, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. That's the point, isn't it? <laughs> he wouldn't do something that he was told to do. He was told to bow down. That's it. And he didn't do it. So why would that one thing that he didn't do make it so he spends eternity in the hellfire. He is the devil, the shaitan, the one, the outcast. Do you get it? What were his footsteps? What did he do? Read it. It says, why? What did he tell Allah? What did he say to Allah? I'm not going to bow down to him. I am better than him. Is that what he said? I'm better. And every time one of us looks at somebody else and we say that, I'm better than him, you just followed his footsteps. 
Welcome to Shaitan. Welcome to your new residence in the Nuari Jahannam. This is not a joke. This is the most serious thing that we face today. <coughs> the division that we find is exactly based on this one thing. And if you said, no, 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 you don't understand. These Sunni Muslims are so and so. These Shiite Muslims are something. Those Sunni Muslims are this or that. Or you, and you're going on and on with these labels. What did Allah call us in this book? He even said it. You heard it in the ayah I read. <coughs> Muslimun. What? Muslim. What's the descriptive adjective in here that you're supposed to use? Oh, that's right, there isn't one. You don't need a Do I need a label? If I don't have the right label, I can't come in this masjid? Is that what the deal is? Without my right label, I can't be in the salah? Yet a total atheist, a total atheist, with boots on, can come stomping in here and you're not going to say a word. But, yeah, and you think I'm joking? I can take you to places where that happens. I've seen it happen. When the armed forces walk into a masjid and everybody's like, ah. And yet, when your brother comes in, you don't even know his name yet. First thing, you're like, no, did he come in on the right foot? Mm, mm. Watch him do that sunnah salah. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoa, 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 look at that. Where did he put his hands? Whoa, whoa, man. His hands are up too high and his chest too low under his stomach. Oh, stuck for law, man. Doesn't even have a miswag. <laughs> Who's he think he is coming in our mosque? We're better than him. Or maybe that doesn't happen over here, huh? In Kuwait. Never saw that, right? It's happening around the world, brothers. All around our world. I just came from Indonesia, Malaysia, and even a brief visit in China. Didn't get to visit any masajid over there, but I'm telling you that no matter where I go, I see the same thing. The one with the neatly pressed sobe. Mine's wrinkled because it's been in a suitcase, but anyway. And special ghutran, egal, just a certain way. And just, you know what I'm saying, got just the right amount of oud on. And stop, brother, brother. And it's not restricted just to the young. Although, that's where it's the easiest for shaitan to get into. Even some of the elders, even some of those who memorize the Quran and have a lot of credibility, at least on paper, of who they are, but I've heard them say things that really upset me about other brothers, even other scholars, that they don't even really know them, but they say these things. And it's all from one source. One source. This kibber is being encouraged by the one who's the expert in kibber, the shaitan. May Allah keep us away from this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correct us and let us look at ourselves first and find our own mistakes and correct that so we get closer to Allah. And if you have a problem with any of the brothers, especially with me, pray for me. Pray for everybody to be rightly guided by Allah because he's the only one going to guide anyway, isn't that right? To we'll ask Allah to guide us. Amen.
Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa salam wa ala alihi wa sabi'i ajmianin wa shal wa la ilaha illallah salamu muhammadin abdahu wa rasul I have some good news but I want to kind of finish up on some of that bad news first, you know. There's a hadith. This is to give an example of what I was talking about in the first khutbah. There's a hadith that is misquoted and misused, misunderstood, but it's thrown around everywhere. Everywhere. The hadith has a very good meaning if you understand all of it. But when you say part of it and then you give the wrong meaning to what you heard, this opens up some big doors of fitna, difficulty and chaos for believers. Adina and Nasiha. Sound like I know what I'm talking about, right? For a lot of our brothers, by the way, and sisters around the world, most, and I'm not joking when I tell you this, most of them don't really know the Arabic language. I mean, not even a little bit. Many have memorized less than 10 surahs. Not Jews, surahs, less than ten. And even then they don't know what they mean. That's, that's a fact. So when they hear a brother come in, especially if he can throw down some Arabic and act like he knows what he's talking about, it's easy to fall for that. I didn't see her, brother. Oh, that's nice. Then what? If you don't know what it meant, now he's going to tell you. Means that we have to give advice to each other, brother. And my advice to you is, huh? We've all heard that. We all know about that. Some of us even fell for that. Say, well, that's, that, that's a good hadith, brother. It's sure not if you only quote part of it. Especially when you give the wrong meaning for it. Let's examine it. Let's, let's examine the hadith translation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala adina nasiha. And there's a period. Stop. Next sentence. So they asked him to who? You didn't read that. Because if you did, then you'd want to know what came next. And this is the part that disproves the whole theory. To Allah and his book and his prophet to the Wale Amr and to the general public. Can you give advice to Allah? Hmm? to the creator and sustainer of the entire universe. What are you going to tell him? I think the giraffe's neck is a bit long, sir. I think you need to drop that down. And You know the size of that pit inside the mango? It's too big. I need a lot more fruit there to eat. And Are you crazy? You don't give any kind of advice to Allah. And how do you advise this book? Excuse me, explain that to me. And how do you advise the Prophet ﷺ when he's the one who brought Islam to us to start with? Plus the fact that today he's not with us. ﷺ. And how are you going to advise the Wali Amr, the leader of the Muslims? How? Considering that 
Most of those in charge of Muslims today are not exactly Wali Omar. And even if you did say anything to them, that'd be the last thing you'd ever do. You'd never finish the sentence. I mean, true or false? Then, then, the general public. And even with Facebook, you can't reach everybody out there. So what does it mean? Ask real scholars that don't sit around playing and making judgment on everybody else. Ask them, what did that hadith mean? They said, it is to give sincerity. Not sincere advice, sincerity in whatever you do to Allah, His book, His prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, following the Sunnah, and then the support, dedication, and sincerity to a true leader of the Muslims, and the same for the general public. So is that taking something out of context or what? Step by step by step you can take this all apart. The shaitan wove that thing together. But when you examine it in the light of the real definition of Islam, the real definition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the real definition from the Arabic language and you suddenly realize, you know what? We're not supposed to judge each other. Isn't Allah the best of judges? What the heck do you think you're doing? And you say, well, it's brother, he told me. Who's this? Well, the Sheikh said, who is he? Use your aqal, brother. Do you really think that you're helping anything by cutting down your brothers? Do you really think you're promoting the brotherhood of Islam by looking at each other and judging whether or not we're wearing the right kind of clothes or the right length of the izar? Do you really think that will make a big difference? Or do you see that as dividing us up further? And suppose, just on the off chance, that somebody might not fit your description of what he needs to be, suppose, what is the best way to advise him? Now, we already took apart this hadith, so you can't use that anymore. What is the best way? Actually, the first thing you do is you make dua for him and ask Allah to guide him and always and us. So, and then, I'm not done. You don't go to the brother and tell him anything. Think about your own brother. You have a brother or you have a sister. And if you go to them and start telling them a bunch of advice, they usually tell you, you know what, they stick their tongue out and tell you, shut up. Get away from me. You don't know anything. Is that true or false? The one we're going to really listen to is the one we think that cares about us. When my mother comes and tells me something, I'm going to listen. Not just because she got a big stick, by the way. But because I respect her. And I know, ultimately, what she's telling me is for my own good. Same with my father. And there are really good teachers that we have in the masjid, in the schools, that we could go to them and ask if I knew a brother that had this or that or the other, what would be the best advice for them? Usually they will say, tell them to come and talk to me. Or let's talk together. Or, you know, because if there is a brother like that, you could say, uh, Sheikh, somebody said like this, and this, is, is that wrong? Yeah. That's wrong. Mm. Could you give us a, a talk about that sometime? I have some brothers I want to come and we'll all hear that from you. See how that works? 
We all come, we sit together, we all hear the shake set, and I didn't lose a friend. I didn't lose one of, one of the people that might be making dua for me. I didn't lose somebody that's going to maybe bury me when I die and make dua for me. Make sense? Did I hurt anybody's feelings? If you really love somebody, if you really care about them, you put their needs over your needs. Is that true? I don't need to be famous and I don't need anybody to tell me, oh, you're the greatest. I don't need that. What I need more than anything else, I need to go to Jannah. I need that. And I need to see all of us be there. This is my dua. I want all of us to go there. This is my dua. Allah put us in Jannah. Allah put us in the best place in the Jannah. I mean. Allah put us in the Jannah to Firdaus al-Allah. I mean, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean. And Allah forgive us for our shortcomings, for our mistakes, for the things that we did knowingly or unknowingly. I mean, does that sound like something our prophet would say? Yeah. Let's lift our foot up off of our brother's foot and stop following the footsteps of the shaitan. Now for the good news. I mean, I, I, I hit you pretty hard, I know. But I, I got something really good. Peace and happiness. Peace and happiness. That's the title of our program tonight. And I wish that you will bring any of our brothers or sisters who were not able to be here today, or people that are not Muslim, that you would like to bring to our program tonight. Peace and happiness. I promise you, it is not what you think. I promise you, it will not be what you think. I never do what people think I'm going to do. That's part of my strategy. Also a lack of good planning, but never mind that. The best part is that tonight you can come and be with us and we'll all together discover the best kind of peace, the best kind of happiness that really works. Now, some of you might not be able to make it. And I understand that. So I'm going to give you a taste, just a taste for your tongue for your mind, just a taste by defining something called success and happiness. It's not the exact title, okay? But success and happiness. How many of us, when we achieve something, we get, you know what we set out to do and we get it and we go, success, right? but are we always happy with it? And how many times we became happy and it wasn't even something we set out to do? So these are two different words, right? Right? So this is just a taste. Think about this saying. Success is getting what you want. Happiness is wanting what you get. May Allah make us happy with what we get and give us the real tawfiq, the real success on the Yom Kiyama. That He not punish us. He excuse us. And He let us enter into that beautiful Jannah of Firdaus. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan wa fil akirti hasan wa kina zabin nawr. Rabbana la tuzikulu bana badda idha daytana wa hab lana mila duka rakma ina kanta wa hab. Amin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Khama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim ina khamidun majid. Ina alhamdulillah rabbil alameen huwa ladhi ja'alna muslimin. Wa akamu salam.